We all think that running a successful project is about managing your scope, time, and budget. Well, it is, but you can't do it without understanding your resources. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you about project resource management. What is project resource management? Well, according to the pen box, and I want to get this right for you, so I'm going to read it. It is project resource management is about identifying, acquiring and managing the resources needed for a successful completion of the project, ensuring that the right resources will be available at the right time. So that's resource management, making sure you have what you need to be successful. Now, what are some of those resources that you have to consider? There's three core fundamental ones that I want you to take note of. The first one is human resources. So these are the people that you need to bring on to your project to make things come to fruition, to execute on tasks. That could be internal resources within your organization, or they can be external resources like a consultant or you're hiring someone on a contract. The second one you need to consider are your financial resources. You need to have an understanding as to what it is that you have to purchase. How much money do you need on this project? And so that becomes really important because you can't run a project without financial resources. And the third one I want you to take note of is material slash equipment slash supply resources. So these are the physical things that you need so that you can execute tasks. They can be equipment, they can be supplies that you need that are going to help you do whatever it is that you need to do. But this is a stuff again, that's tied in. It's a resource that you need in order to ensure that you can deliver on your project. Okay, if you wanna take a, a step further, you need to check this out. I'm gonna give you more information on it later on in the video. It all starts with planning. So in order to get really good at project resource management, you really need to do this at the beginning stages of your project and initiation. And my Slay students already know this because I talk all about that in the initiation stage. And we talk about scope templates as how that really helps you to pull out that planning part so that you can talk and do this together with your sponsor, your executive, or your manager, because you really need to get clear on what exactly it is that you're doing, how many people and who is needed, how much is this going to cost? And more importantly, what else do you need to purchase get in order to make this come to fruition? And in fact, what I do with my own clients, when I run their projects, I pull out my scope template and I literally run through it with them. It helps us really solidify the deliverable because nine times out of 10 in the beginning of a project, people have concepts and ideas, but they're not really uber clear. And when you get clear by asking the right set of questions that's in the scope template, you can lock down and start the process of doing your resource management planning. Finding your human resource. So how do you find out who you need for a project? Yes, we have the scope template, absolutely. It's a great starting part, but it's not the only place that you go to look for this because you're in the beginning stages of your project. You're planning everything out. So one of the things I teach is go into your work breakdown structure, get an understanding of the big bucket items that you're trying to do. So now what you're doing is this very high level look at what's going on. And when you break it down in those big bucket items, and then you look at, well, what is it that we have to do? Who needs to be involved? You will be surprised as to how many times people kind of pop up like, oh my goodness, we actually need Joe for this from the quality standpoint. I didn't even think about that in the scope template. That's a good thing when you do that because you have to look at things from a different angle. Just don't look at it from one viewpoint. And a work breakdown structure, and structure is an excellent technique that does that. You may also wanna to talk to subject matter experts. So as you're prepping in your planning stage, you wanna to talk to them, show them those big bucket items. Is there anything else that's going on? You wanna show them that scope template that you were working on initially. Is there anything else that can be called out? And once that occurs, you're probably gonna be pretty good with being locked and loaded for the human resources that you need to ensure your project is successful. Now, before we get on to the next tip, did you know that I have an online group coaching program that you can join anytime? And I'm really excited about it. It provides you with all the information that you need to be successful from a course and lesson perspective that I have in Slay Project Management. And it also gives you access to me for weekly group coaching calls. And what's really cool is an AI project tool to help you fill out your templates. So if this is something that you're interested, it's actually called Slay Project Management Pro. And I'm gonna have the link for you underneath this video if you wanna check it out. 
identify your material resources. So just like the human resources, that WBS, the work breakdown structure framework, when you're taking a look at the high level big buckets, you go here as well to pull out what are those materials that I need to make this successful. And you want to go back and talk to your subject matter experts with that as well. Now, if you want to be efficient and effective when you're talking to them to talk about, Hey, did I include everyone in here? Is anyone else that you think I'm missing? You can actually talk to them at the same time and saying, Hey, by the way, is there any type of materials or supplies that we need to consider that we need here for these particular stages or buckets that they're helping you out identify. So, so that's really important because again, you need to have an understanding as to what is it that you have to get. And the best way to do that is by reaching out to subject matter experts, potentially people who are probably going to be on your project. Finalize your financial resources. So this I left last for a very good reason, because you need to, when you start off, as I said earlier on, it's all about that planning stage, getting your scope, getting very clear with what you're doing, your high level thought process of the people you need, the materials and potential budget. And now when you reached out to really get the detail through your subject matter expert, you need to understand, is there anybody else we have to include that we originally didn't think about? Is there any additional material that I need? Because those two things have cost associated with them. And you initially looked at potentially what the budget was going to be when you did your scope statement with the sponsor or executives or your manager. But now you just have to revisit it one more time because you got some new information and that, and you do that last because your materials, your resources, they may indicate that you forgot somebody or something, and now you need to add it to the budget. And so when you do that, you finalize what you feel the budget is build any contingency by the way, because there may be things throughout the project that pop up as well. And now you're going to get final approval on your financial resources. And you want to do this now. It is so much easier to get your budget at this stage than it is trying to do it halfway through the project. So this is something that again, those three stages are really going to be helpful in that order to do your resource uh, management for your project. Now I do have a little side note for you here, and that's about monitoring and adjusting your project resource uh, plan and the management of it is you're going to want to ensure that your charter is up to date. You have all the information in there. You have a really good steering committee set up because as I said earlier on, things change and shift. You may need to go down a different direction. You may need more money. You may need more resources. Something occurred that your resource plan has shifted and changed. And how do you do that? All you do is you bring it up in the steering committee, you reference it and you vet it out through your charter to make sure it's all aligned and you get approval. So that's something to definitely consider that it's all integrated and all working together. All right, so now you're here and I told you I have something for you. These are my tips that I've written for you that are gonna help you ensure that your projects are successful and you bypass things that are gonna just hit you and create failure. So I highly recommend you check it out. You can get it underneath this video. There's a link, so go grab it. Make sure you watch this next video if you have any additional questions on cost management. I break it down all here. If you resonated with this video and you learned something like it, join this community by subscribing. And until the next time, I'll see you at the next video.